staring back in that chair and I'll get my text messages. <laughs> and I, no, I got it. I didn't, I didn't see it. I'm not glued to my phone, but I didn't see it. Sorry. Right now. Danielle, please. The meeting tonight is for the conduct of town business by the town board. The public is invited to participate at the items marked on the agenda public comment. During that segment of the meeting, if you have a question or comment for the supervisor, please raise your hand and wait to be acknowledged. Please state your full name and limit your remarks to three minutes. Thank you for your anticipated cooperation. Thank you, Danielle. I'd like to start the meeting off with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance. standing for a moment of silence for all our brave men and women fighting all over the world for democracy and freedom and also for our first responders. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Item three, motion to approve the agenda. Need a motion, gentlemen? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Motion to approve minutes from the January 13, 2020 town board meeting. You need a motion for that, gentlemen? Motion. Need a second? Second. These guys are asleep or? Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. A motion to approve the minutes from the 2020 reorganizational meeting. Make, Make motion. Need a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None being said. Moved. Item five, authorized payments of the bill. It's a big one, $750,390.23. Need a motion to pay the bills. Yes, I'll make that motion. Second. Need, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None being said. Motion carried. Paying the bills. Uh, so you want to move the, we'll have uh, BJ talk on the uh, workshop. Topics when he gets here. Okay. I saw a member from the uh, Meet Me in Marlboro. Hi. Uh, any comments on the agenda? None being said. We'll move forward. Uh, new business. Any new business? Workshop topics. Jeez, uh, why didn't you make an amendment to the agenda? No, you can new business. We could uh, make it. We could uh, want to do it. Wherever you want. New codes for 2020. Uh, Tom, uh, we, uh, myself and the building inspector, uh, along with the planning board members, uh, suggested some changes to the board. To the board. Uh, and uh, so some of them are uh, very good ones. So, uh, Tom, do you want to explain what we talked about? Come on up, and then we could have a uh, dialogue with the board. Thank you, sir. How are you today? You don't look too happy. Anybody else have their code book or no? Nobody does. Yeah, we could look it up on the no, uh, web. I, we could I, go to the web. I just want to make sure that uh, one of these I have here, I, I think we already addressed it, but we'll, we'll look at that. We'll, we'll look at the new ones. Okay. So the first one would be uh, just under a basic definition. We had um, a problem with our uh, escrow accounts and the way it was worded, and we were um, challenged at some point during... Uh, our affairs during the uh, this year so the this word escrow was uh, put together by myself uh, 
pulling out of Webster's, the New York State law, and uh, tweaking what we had in the book. So that was basically the, the first one. It's fairly basic, but it gives us a better def definition of what escrow is and uh, keeps us out of uh, certain lawyers' challenges in uh, so what it was. Basically, um, when we get done, Tom uh, asks permission to go to our attorney. Uh, so maybe the attorney could uh, look at this escrow thing because they're involved in this latest fiasco about escrow, mm -hmm. maybe along with your input. Okay. Uh, the second one was the uh, under the open burning permits. We, um, as everybody knows, we issue burn permits uh, at a cost of $5 per month with exemptions to the uh, agricultural, to the farmers, which we've really never had a problem with. What we've had a problem with in the last year is that we have some agricultural farming that abuts the zones that are prohibited for, for burning, is the R zone and the C zones. And those two zones restrict burning because they're obviously within the hamlets, at close proximity, and any type of smoke in those areas, smoke out the neighborhoods, the businesses, and so forth. We've had some individual problems here where the school districts actually come down to us, where the school district uh, and, and the town hall uh, get smoked out and they can't breathe here at our town hall. So the the addition to what already exists in the book is really just what's in bold. Uh, we don't, we prohibit the burning in all the R and C zones, again, because the smaller zones, uh, very close proximity of businesses and uh, houses. So we'll just add all the budding properties. We're, you know, there's no exemption for the budding property. So if you have, again, and, and not to, to bother the agricultural, because again, if, if you've got a farm that's 300 acres, all we ask is we take that that stuff out further away from the R and the C1 zone so it doesn't really smoke the town out. So that would be the addition and all the budding properties with no exceptions. All right. Well, what if it, just on that note, what if a, a um, I don't know if we have a situation, but if there's a farm that has 300 acres and it abuts one of those mm -hmm. and he could put it 200 acres away and that. So that's what he said. That would say no exceptions, he couldn't do it. We're saying if it abuts that zone, they can't burn in it. Yeah. They can't burn next to you go to another side of the farm. We'll, we'll burn on another portion of the farm and another section. Yeah, of but it. again, if that's one parcel, it abuts that zone. I did, a, I did a, an extensive view, and there's only one parcel that does that. <clears throat> that's in Milton, right? Mm hmm. And the problem is you can't breathe. Again, the, the, the reason for the the code prohibiting burning in the R and C zones is because the close proximity and you can't breathe. It's as simple as that. So you can't burn in that district. So the district, if the, again, and everybody knows that from the, the residential complaints we get in, in the highway development zone, there's a fine line between where the highway development and you've got a residential between it. That line, again, unfortunately for that residential, butts the commercial and we're in the same situation here, whereas that if a, a different zone we're not even a different zone. They're in that zone. They just get the exemption under the farm exemption. And I'm okay with giving them farm exemptions, you know, as far as size and everything else that's permitted under permit. But the problem is, is that you smoke the town out. You couldn't even see in town one day. And I, I got 100 phone calls, and all I could say is nothing I could do. So you couldn't open your businesses. You couldn't open your front doors to the town hall. People couldn't breathe. Allergies were happening. We were getting complaints. So you cannot burn if you were but one of those zones because we prohibit it for specific reasons. So, and you're saying well, that there's, there's not, so if you have a large parcel of land, if you put it on, let's say you're abutting on the east side, if you put the bur burned on the west side of your property, that's, that's, fun, that's still fun. not a good, you still can't do that. Well, because again, that, that, I, we can, we can, again, that's why we're here. If you want to put, if you want to put a distance from the, from the thing. I think a distance would make sense. All right, then which one of you guys are going out there with the tape measure? That's all I want to know. Google Earth. I'll, I'll throw that back at Chief then. He's going to have to go out there with tape measure and figure out what the distance is. Well, but you said you checked, Tom, and there's only one property in town that would... Correct. And they have other parcels that don't abut that district. Uh-huh. So they can burn there. You know, they're not going to want to because they got to transport the stuff from one lot to another, but... Uh, but that's probably it. Right. But, yeah, but as it's worded, and all abutting properties and no exceptions, that means that if there are some changes to any of the farms around and 
their farms are bought, a C and an R, that would take away the whole farm as written, open burning, so that whole farm would have no open burning. Right, because if they abut that district, again, we're, <coughs> we're circumventing what the law is. The circumvention is not to burn in C and R because it smokes sure, out the no, town and businesses. Wait, um, how long has it been like that? That code's been there ever since I've been here, so it's well, been 15 years. It's, it's probably even burning. longer. It's well, I know that I used barrel. to be able to burn in a barrel in my house years ago. No, the DEC changed that statewide. Oh, no, you, can, you can't do that. No, I know you can't. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. 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 I know what you're saying. Again, and I have no problem with you guys wanting to put a distance on it. You still have to get a permit, even if you're a farmer, right? That's correct. So, uh, so when they come to get a permit and they abut the... Uh, if that address abuts it, I, I would say no. You were not going to give them a permit. Right? Correct. They could burn on another address on their farm. Again, change it 250 feet, change it to a mile. So what's so somebody's going to police it. What's the difference if they have a 300 acre farm? So now to burn, they subdivide the farm to uh, 90, I mean, uh, 10 acres and 290 acres, and the 10 acres that abuts the scene, they could burn that, right, correct? Say one more time, I was just looking up the date. This, no. this went in effect in 1986, that, that burn law. saying, what if someone says, okay, I'm just going to cut off an acre of property yeah, with that sure. zone. Yeah. Anything yeah. that, that bought you, they cut off. That's going to cost too much money. Then they can burn yeah, anywhere. Now they can burn anywhere. Well, well, no, because then what would that property go to? Change that law. If they, want to cut, if they want to cut off an acre from that zone to try to circumvent the law, God bless them. Then they're an acre, acre away. Then there, there's your footage. You're going to get 250 feet, 300 feet from the... From the from well, they'd the, have to do a thin... Right. Couldn't go a thin thing because you'd have to meet current, you'd have to meet the requirements of this subdivision, which would be minimum height and width. No problem. These aren't set in stone. These is, this is what we came up over. I mean, you can see this was the summer. I just, the only thing is hard to set like a distance because if, I guess like you're saying, when the wind blows, it doesn't matter how far away. Yeah, I've seen it come down the turnpike. And there's, there's no, I mean, uh, when it happens, there's no recourse that, where we can go right. and tell them to not like burn the because the smoke is... There's no recourse at all. Again, the book only tells you you can't butt but in the RNC. So if you're in, uh, not in either one of those zones, and here come, here's the C, and the line is right here, and then on the other right. side is something else. Right. I yeah. understand that, but I'm saying in the case, I remember the incident was really bad. You could hardly breathe. A lot of people were complaining. I'm just saying, is there any, we can't really uh, control that as far as then putting it out? No, because they're exempt. No, because they're exempt. They got the burn stop. permit. I mean, we can't call, okay. No, I'm can't. just saying, yeah. The Once the permit's the issued, again, and I have nothing to write it up under. <clears throat> and the, and farmer, the farmers themselves, even though we have this, they're not exempt from this, no matter what? No, that's why it says we no exemption. Yeah. Exception. Yeah, the but farmers are. We say no exceptions. Is that farming? No, state because the code allow them to do these things. The farmers, if there's top of my head, there's ten rules on the back of the burn permit. They're only exempt from two. They still have to meet the requirements of eight. They can't burn at night. Uh, they get exempt from the size of the pile. They get exempt from the size of the limb. Basically, it's only two they get exempt from. You know, you as an individual come get a burn permit. You have to have this small pile, and you can't burn anything larger than three inches. They get the exemption from that because they're going to burn a tree, all right, and they're going to burn a, in a larger pile because they're putting eight trees together instead of a bunch of little limbs. <coughs> but they're not exempt from the rest of the permit. They get an agricultural permit for one year at no cost, but they're not exempt from all the rules and regulations on the back <laughs> except for the two, size of the pile and size of what they're burning. <coughs> Basically, to the west, we never have any problems because it's more well, We You don't hear. We, we've had multiple in the fire department. We get... Um, Neighbors call for a smoke investigation, and it's basically what's going on in this instance down here. That's roots. It's all wet wood, and they burn. They usually burn on rainy days, and rainy days the smoke hangs low. Mm -hmm. Or they burn in the summer when it's, you know, it's humid. I've been up in the back where people's houses they got swimming pools, and it's. I just tell them it's life in the farm town. There's nothing we can. I can't put it out. Yeah. We can't tell them to stop. It's the right to farm. Or it's the right to farm. Yeah, I think we don't have control of that. You know, when it's Fourth of July weekend and you can't use your pool, yeah. No, nah, not if they're in the right districts. It's but the problem is, is you can't you can't theoretically burn in town. I mean, this is happening. Can't fire in town. Can't have anything burned in town. Anything yeah. burn in town. But the problem is, is we, we're burning in town, so it's RFC as simple as that. Is the only, our only town. 
Correct, the C1 zone and the R zone. We, we exempted the C2 because that's up on 4455. Should we? I don't know, but it does. C1 is the two hamlets and R is the two hamlets. So you can't burn in the hamlet. Unfortunately, the C1 zone is very small in the hamlet of Milton and the abutting properties are right on top of the road. They're no more than 200 feet from Main Street in Milton. The property, unfortunately, the one property. And they're in R Ag 1? So yeah. R Ag 1? Oh, yeah. So up on, like, say, for instance, Clark's Lane with all the houses are there. Mm -hmm. That's all, what's one of the ones that's that are? That's Ag, and they're allowed to burn. I mean, they, they can, I mean. And what, the, the road, the houses, they're all developed across the road on the other side. So Again, listen, burning is not, not, it's not an exact science here saying we're going to, we're going to, no, I'm just saying, we're not going to eliminate everybody's complaints up, up in the back, right, but, but those houses are on one acre, are they're they spread eight, out. Are they ag also? Yeah, they're all one. Yeah. All right. Right. That's yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I think, I say, yeah, just try it. See. I mean, you, again, we're not saying you can't, R1 you could burn in, RAG1 you could burn in, right. all the other zones you can, again, because of the distance of the housing. Again, like Alan said, is it impossible that you smoke somebody out in their pool on 4th of July? Absolutely not. It's going to happen. You're, you're not going to eliminate that, but this... So in this case here, though, just let, let's just take the one you say that does a butt, and if they could move it, have you looked how far of their next parcel is? I don't look into anything. That's not, you know, it's not... Good. I mean, have we looked like, so say we say, okay, but that, that parcel is two acres and then you, mm. they go on the next parcel. Is it really any better? If it abuts it, they can't do it. If it doesn't no, abut that, it, then it's but fine. What if that abutment of that property is very small? And so it's only a hundred feet. The next property starts. So is, are we, are we? We're saving a hundred feet. I mean, a hundred feet in smoke is like nothing. Right? So I'm just. And then how the wind's blowing. Right. It all depends on humidity, wind, and wildlife. Most of the time. Well, in, in this one case, it doesn't matter what day it is or what it is. You can't breathe in town. Businesses can't open. The school district is crazy because you can't open the front door. Now, they when, can't open their windows. When did that happen? That happened. This past summer. I mean, yes. you can see my, I, I dated this June 14th, so I'm going to guesstimate it was right around, give or take. You know, that's when this one came around. Well, I must have got 15 like phone calls. Say, maybe it is better to say and one they're not good when they can't they breathe and they can't open their businesses up. And the school district's yelling at me because I'm right down the hallway from them. Mile, but this was at the high school. At least you have that. No, right here. Oh, right, here. Right, 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 here. right here. Right here. School district meaning okay. the administrative offices. I gotcha. That's what I'm getting at. Oh, it was in this area. Okay, gotcha. I'm getting clarification now. No, I'm just getting at is it better to put a distance of, say, one mile from the edge? of a zone because it gives you more of a distance. I don't know how you get your measuring tape out. I don't know how you measure that, but what I'm just saying is guys could do whatever you want. That would be too restricting to get a lot of farmers upset with that. I think a mile, yeah. that's a long ways. Again, you have to put something in that could be easily policed. I could easily police the district when I've got the district map in my office. Other than that, you're gonna have to talk to the chief and he's gonna have to handle it with his people with a wheel and a tape measure. You've got the, you got the um, uh, so same thing robot. Like the robot. Uh, get it up in the air. <laughs> yeah. Measure the distance. I don't know. All right. We could try it, right? We're gonna, Put it in there let's look at that. The other one is the uh, compliance with the re regulation in the, uh, for water districts. In the code book right now, we have, if you are in the sewer district, meaning if the sewer line the sewer district passes your property you're obligated to hook to the sewer district uh no ifs ands or buts you're obligated to hook to the district in no way uh, impossible right, hey, it's not being enforced <laughs> it's not being enforced <laughs> i hear you Ed, but i'm not the enforcement on that so you could get the next guy all i could tell you is that in the code book there is no section for the water department if the water line goes past your house you have no obligation hooked no. to the water line uh, discussions with the board or individuals on the board decided they would like to have that happen if the water goes past you they want you to hook up to it so that's how i rewrote that basically it's just a rewrite of the sewer district uh wording put into the water district wording i have only one thing if we're going to do this then we better get the sewer district done before we even put another one that we're not going to enforce i think the water thing is like important the sewer thing's well, important. Look at well my backyard. The sewer thing is something back in the day that we don't have any control over. But you're taking right you're now, taking right now with the water. If right. somebody has a good well that they like and they their water is better than our water, 
let's say. No, no, this is for new development. New development. Oh, I thought it said if it passes by, it says right there, if it passes by anything uh, this right This basically uh, came up because of a new development but that that's happened. But that's not, that's not well, it came up because a lot of new developments weren't right. hooking into the water They were in the water district and, and they weren't, weren't hooking yeah, but the way this reason they didn't want to extend the water but, but this, some more. But, but what this says here, right. anybody that it passes, not just new development, correct, Tommy? Mm -hmm. Like a reading it correct. So if there's ten houses in the hamlet that didn't hook up to the water because they went to the sewer, now that this was in there, they're going to have to hook up too. I don't see it. Well, just even like the new water line we just ran the chestnut. Mm -hmm. There's houses <laughs> along there that went goes the past their house. Right, and that, yeah, according to this, what we're according to this law, they would have, have to, to hook up, now. which I don't think so. I think we have. To, we'll have to look at that. I mean, I don't disagree with this. New development. I'm fine with. But there's a lot of people. Listen, I didn't write it. I just took, again, I just took the word sewer out and put water in, and that's what was asked, and that's what's there. That's the exact same wording yeah, that we have for the sewer. I'm just, I don't think, like the yeah, well, somebody's had their wealth or whatever, and they want their well. I don't see why we have to make them No, no, I agree. I think it came up during the planning board where uh, a bunch of houses were in the water district. Mm -hmm. Mr. Majeo, uh was wondering why they weren't hooking up to the water. This is new development. And they didn't have to. There's nothing in the code yeah, that right. says uh, And I'm to. all for it, but I think the word new development has to be put in there. It can't be just it can be anybody that hasn't been in a water district now for passing their house for 30 years and they got a well that they, they enjoy. Why me. should they? Well, you could just I put a, you could just okay. put a, <laughs> you could just do like we do in our contracts, yeah. like as of such and such a date, any, new any future yeah. home Development or home building. If you're in the water district, you got to hook in. So even I if it's just, it. just so you know, you'll, you'll get, then future. you're going to get backlash on the. And I got no problem with that. I, I, I could agree house. with that. Again, this is neither here nor there for me. But you, you know, you got the other wording for the sewer district. So if you're going to do for one, you're going to have to do for the other. Because right now the sewer district says you have to, and that's what this wording says. Because what we did is copper the sewer district. But that happened. That law happened when we first started the sewers. That's when it started. We've already got water in a lot of places. And a lot of people don't have water. There's a lot of people that want water, and we can't bring in water because right. we're cost restricted. Right, and I understand that. But I mean, I would put something in that says, as of January 2020, anybody that's in the new, the new development within the water district, either just building a single house, a development, anything. Anybody as of this date would have to hook in. Well, they just don't have so to they build. know that ahead of time when before they start building a house. Right, they're not gonna I'm not going to invest in a, in a well because right. I'm obligated to be in the water district, right? Right. So now they don't have, so it's not like saying, well, you have a well, we don't care, we're shutting your well down. Right. Or you're going to perk in the water. And waters. the only pushback would be from the developers that would actually have to put in a water main. No. If they're going to propose a right. 20, they're gonna get 20 lot back, subdivision, they're going to have to start that, that, I have no problem with that. Hydrants. They know in advance, and that's fine. Is that what Charlie was after? New yeah. development? Yeah, new development. basically. Okay, then so, so let's just reword it with the new development. Yeah. I'm fine with it. Uh, yeah, that's what he was asked. That's what Chris Bram was asking, too. Tom, we did the uh, sprinkler code, didn't we? That still didn't bump down legal things or legalize the sprinkler? We didn't do anything for sprinkler for as far as town code. I thought we were talking about a town code for sprinkler systems. Didn't we have a meeting about this like months ago? Uh, you know, we did have something. We had a meeting about the lock box. Knox box and, the, and sprinklers for commercial. And we decided that we make sure that in the when the planning board with new like warehouses and stuff like that, that they make sure that the individual the application has the uh, lock box. Knox box. Knock box. Knox. <laughs> lock knock. K N O X. Right. Tom, we talked about that. Yeah, we talked about. I mean, I, I think it's it, it's tough to put in town code. I think the knock box requirement. I think that's more of a planning board um, requirement. But we needed that so you had teeth. That was the problem. Well, you, that's that would be part of your enforcement on your inspection. I just don't know. I mean, as far as the town code re requiring knock boxes. And then you're going to put them retroactively. Is that what you want to do? I think well, on any new development, for sure. Right. Any new repurpose. That, right. so, so that would be that would be if that's part of the. So this is my recommendation on this. And you guys can go any way you want. That I would take from both police depart. I'm sorry, both fire departments, a list of where they'd like to see the knockbox. With that, I would write a letter 
requesting that they do it. So it's not a mandatory retroactive, but I believe I would get 95% of them to agree to the knockbox would not a problem. I would hand out the literature. I would say this is for your safety. We'd go through it. So under the, the, under the advisement of both fire companies and fire chiefs, where we'd want those sent. So that would help us go backwards retroactively without mand mandating it. Moving forward, if it's within the site plan application on the checklist that the knock spot be installed, if they didn't install it, I already have bite in the code book saying it would be a violation of site plan. So the knock box, when you show up to a spot that was approved in 2021 and there's no knock box, I have bite in the code book because the code book says violation of site plan would require me to shut them down. So the violation of that site plan is there's no knock box on site. It was a requirement of the planning board. It's on the checklist. It's on the paperwork. You're done. With that said, we could find a spot to put it individually. I just don't where, where it is. Again, planning board requirement for the knock box is going to be in those commercial uses. We're not going to be in that residential use, so it's going to be commercially done. So as long as the planning board has that as their, on their punch list and it's part of the site plan, then I have bite already in the code book saying violation of site plan if the box is not on site. You guys call me. 1924, Route 9W doesn't have a knockbox, boom, done. S violation of site plan, I quote it, they do it or I close them down. But you can go either way, but that's how we get around, that's right. the bite in the code book under violation of site plan if it's not done. And I think we could get, like I said, 90 to 95% of the people in town retroactively without putting a hammer down on them with a the request by myself, who's also doing fire inspections at these sites to say, this is Whoa. what I need and it, it benefits you, it's not, an expense that we're asking you to incur to benefit our us, it is, but it isn't. This benefits you. What's but the what's the expense or the process of putting a knock box in? Like, what do they got to do? Tap cons and yeah, I mean, just basically just put a couple tap cons in a wall, stick it on, and just put it on a wall. It's just a box that holds the keys. A, it's yeah. exactly like one of those boxes where you would put up in your house and put a little combination code on it, opens up, and the keys in it. Same process, except only the only key is going to be held by the fire department. Nobody else has the now, key. Now, would they, like, would they get an insurance deduction by having sure, one of those? I'm pretty like, sure if they call Just it, trying to sell it to them. Their insurance agent, I'm pretty sure. I'm they don't have 95% sure it's going, it's going to be an easy sell to these people. The expense is so, it's very minimal. But so again, you don't have to, without, without a section in the code book, without having to say this is re retroactive, without me chasing yep. a list by both fire to companies with a letter from myself as the fire inspector, We'll, we'll net us 90, well, 95 percent. you could add it to your fire inspection and say this is a new requirement. Yeah, easy. Like I said, that's right? not a problem. As you're doing your yearly fire inspection. But as far as code, I mean, as long as the planning board has it moving forward, again, everything moving forward uh, as a checklist, it, it's easily enforced by me under violation of site plan if it's not on site, just like anything is. Right. And th we also talked about the... Uh the uh, guidelines, right? The design guidelines. The design yeah. guidelines that you, you, you implement, um, again, as, me, as far as me having bite or an answer to that, it, it already exists in the code book under uh, site plan, under the section under site plan. I could probably read it to you if I find it real quick. So I, I believe that's what you guys were looking for. Site plan, I think, is 130 something, 131. But then uh, the reason, the way we address that, Tom, is to put it in the uh, the uh, site plan uh, proposal that we have with the boxes. Well, I assumed you guys were already doing that, so yeah, that that would be my so assumption. That that is already there. there. Saying that uh, you have to look at the suggested design guide rules. Yeah, because in the beginning, it's got to be one thirty. No, it's just it's just under uh, it's under site plan it's review. Code, yeah. uh, so originally was put in design guidelines. There's the wording in the very beginning of it. Yeah, yeah, those people way in the back. Everybody's uh, waiting. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, without me, it's in here somewhere. There it is, 31, I thought it was. All right. So, if you were looking for, again, bite in the code book under why they have to look at the design guidelines,
purpose of this section is to provide regulations governing the applicability, submission requirements, standards for review and design as due in the price process of the site plan review and approval. So that tells you that you have to look at the, the standards, the design standards that you guys implemented. So as long as the planning board puts that on their checklist, if you're saying where in the code book does it say that I have to look at the design standards when the applicant comes in to so go the very first paragraph, the second sentence of site plan review in the code book tells you that you have under your submission requirements, the standards for review and design and the process to be approved by the planning board for site plan approval. So it's there. So there's your, again, you're always looking when you put the code in, have some type of enforcement or bite, like Alan had said with the knock box, the bite for the knock box is violation of site plan under that section of the same, of same code 15531. And where does it tell me I have to look at these design guidelines according to your planning board application? Where does it say it in the code book? 15531 second sentence. It's right yeah, there in the beginning. Yeah, we're putting that block diagram too. Right, and you again, that's so what you've created. So that out when somebody comes in for right. a site plan. Right, they're going to get that, but again, the question would be if they question the planning board, where does it say in the code book I have to look at this design standard? There it is. Very first set, second sentence of the first paragraph of site plan review. That's where your bite is. Again, you always look for bite when you create something new. Okay. So that's your bite in that first sentence. Okay. Uh, one other. Um, or maybe you had other. Did you have other things? I, just uh, I wanted to that was remind you of that. Well, that one on the I just want to verify that. It's still in my code book, but I, I think it came out. I'm pretty sure that came out. Um, What's that? Permit? No permit? That bottom one. It was where no permit required for for sheds 144 square feet. It was a contradictory section of the code book. I believe we addressed it, but for some reason that page didn't get taken out of my book, so it's still there. So I'm gonna verify that on, we on the website. We did, didn't we? Yeah. I'm pretty sure we did. Yeah. So I'll just verify that my, my page wasn't changed out, so that was probably the only. Were you able to get your head around the uh, conflicting, or maybe it wasn't conflicting, but uh, the, the, the pertaining to the junkyards? And someone in, in one of our grant applications or in an LWRP review, they had they had seen uh, some information that said, uh, one section said junkyard should be of, of certain size and another section sh uh, said it should be of uh, the lot size. Should that's the square, that's that? the uses of it. You need 10 acres to have a junkyard to even be permitted under site right. plan review. Right. Then there's a maximum amount that you could use for the, the cars themselves. That's what I, my interpretation Correct. is. Correct, so right. there's a Your maximum square footage. Right. And we're good so at all we actually sent it. Whatever's uh, not, I had, yeah, we're good. I had uh, Tom write me okay. the interpretation, and I sent that to Barbara Carroll. Uh, right. Barbara Kendall. Kendall. Okay. Barbara Carroll. I'm under the so impression that we're going to have any more junkyards. Can we take that out? No, junkyards are still available in the really? industrial district with 10 acres or more. And then what they're, they're, the questioning is, and once you go, that's in the... That's in the section under 15512 telling you you could have junkyards, but you have to have 10 acres. Then you go to the junkyard section, and the junkyard section specific in the code says that you can only use up to five acres of, I believe. So the, there's no contradiction. It's just a matter of density. If you even look at our Schedule 1, Schedule 1 says you need one acre to build a house, but you can only cover 25% of the land. So it's, it's, it's under the same premise. You could have need 10 acres to even get the application. You can only cover five with the junkyard. The rest is for... Uh, buildings and it's parking always, always and building. everything else. It's, it's a density requirement there. Instead of just putting a percentage, they actually put an acreage requirement in. So even if you had 100 acres, you don't use five? Wait yeah, correct. Know. Right, that, that was, the, that was the, you didn't want it that large. So minimum was 10, have 100 acres, maximum density requirement on that would be five acres. Yeah. Just like, you know, with a house or a business, every one of those districts in six, schedule one gives you a minimum lot size, but then it gives you coverage. It's 20 acres. Right. You need yeah. 20 acres. Yeah. You have to be in the industrial zone. Mm -hmm. I think. How many existing do we have now? Junkyards? I get permits about five, I think, or I six. Think so. We've lost one, two over the last handful of years I've been here. Mr. Kramer's junkyard ceased on uh, uh, Mahoney. Yeah, and, um, yeah Mahoney. <laughs> and then the uh, Tommy DeSantis is on Western expired. That one's no longer exists. The one up at the airport's still there. The one at the airport's still there, correct? Nine W's there. Young's is there. Young's. But the airport was the two airport. up in uh, forty-four fifty-five. Yeah, you got Browns and uh, <laughs> Feehans. The, the airport's so long. New people they, they maintained it. it. Yeah, they maintained it. They maintained the license. As okay. long as the license doesn't go vacant for one year, the license is good. There's a. There's sometimes there's a disconnect between 
a junkyard license and a dismantler's license. A junkyard license is issued by the town. DMV has nothing to do with a junkyard license. They have jurisdiction over the uh, dismantler's license that some of these junkyards require and or have. So when it comes to can I transfer my junkyard license, the Department of Motor Vehicles is not involved in that or, or it's just the town, it's a town licensing thing. Um, and our license is just like anything, they're, as long as they don't go pre-existing non-conforming, because a lot of our junkyards don't have the acreage, right. but the pre-existing non-conforming continues as long as it doesn't go dormant for one year. And the two other junkyards, as I had mentioned before, both had gone dormant for a year, lost their pre-existing non-conforming, and they no longer Shit. exist in town. How does a junkyard go dormant? Yeah, hmm. yeah. They just I got two <laughs> questions. You don't I'm pay. Sorry. I know these guys want to go, but yeah. just to go back to the, the hooking fine. into the water, just I'm just thinking ahead. So if we have someone that was supposed to be here tonight talking about a water extension that is coming maybe in two weeks, that's a long run up to where they're going. They're going to pass a lot of people's properties, including a whole development. Right. Would that require the whole mm -hmm. McLaughlin Drive to have to go in there if we worded no, it the way it this would only be, No, it would only be the property not in the district. next to the main. The two in the district. The, the line has to pass in front of your property to be in the district. Anybody off of that, two pro one property removed is not in the district. The district but is in front of you. The properties along, say, 9W would? Would be required to go be, to come yeah. in the district. And I bet a lot of them in that area if, would, would want to. If you don't put in the new development. The, yeah, the new development requirement. I think, yeah, I think that's why it, that's a good clause to put in. That's another reason. Look at me, you know, as of, as of the adoption of this code and, and the date goes on, the adoption of this code, or you can put the date in there, is that moving forward, if you, you know, under new subdivisions, if, you, if it passes you. But again, you might want to tweak. If we're going to go to the rule changes, you either touch or don't touch the sewer district because it's kind of the same thing. Because the sewer district uh, right now up, just says if you're in it. We should update both of them to say similar. So that's, if we update the water, maybe we should update the sewer in oh, the same Tommy capacity. Oh, Tommy brought that up. That's Correct. What Tommy said. This I is, mean, he used the verbiage from the sewer, so he says. Right. Yeah, no, but it. I mean, because like, like I said, Alan, like Eddie's brought up a few times, some yeah. people have not hooked in, and we've kind of, it's probably grandfathered in at this point that they have not, and we allowed it. Um, that maybe now we put in there a certain date again to say, well, as of now, any new people that are in the sewer district are required to definitely go in. I, I don't know how you would do it because I can tell you right now with this phase two sewer going up nine W. Some people are opting not to do it because they already spend twenty thousand on their on their sewer. But see right system. there, that's going against right. their code. D yeah, that's exactly I, right. This, but I mean, at this point, they would have not been the district has. We haven't done the phase two yet. We're doing. We're in, implementing it now finding people who want to be in it. Yeah, see, but that, that request that, that request is invalid. I mean, right. because you're right. Right. The coach says if you're in the district, you hook to it. Yeah, but if you're in the district, you still, even if you choose not to hook into it, you still get an annual bill. You don't get a usage bill, you get a district yeah, bill. Yeah, you get a bill. bill yep. so yeah. Right, right. But the code book, but the code is very right. minimal. It's like yeah. Yeah. But the code book, right? the so code expensive. book requires you to hook into it. So gotcha. if, if your adoption on your on your verbiage would be something in effect, I believe you're saying, if the district is create, it's almost like a pre-existing non-conforming. Right. If the district's created after you're there, then you don't have to hook in. Right. But if the district, you know, if you move in and the district's already there, or you build with the district passing you, you have no right. choice. For but like new in. development, same thing. If it's Correct. new, you should have to be required to go in. So, so that's what I'm saying. If you want to get McLaughlin exempt, then, the, then when you change the water, the wording should be exactly the same in the sewer saying if the, if the property right. exists with an existing system, that would be an exemption. So you put the code in how you want it written, right, right. and then underneath it, it's exemption one if you pre, if you well, pre-exist the district. Yeah, because technically it would just be the properties next to it. So there would only be one, two, three, four, five, six. There would be six properties that it would affect. It wouldn't affect all McLaughlin Drive. It would only affect the house in the corner. And then the house on the other. Yeah, but the same thing. The six people might say, oh, "Why? Well, I don't need water." No, that's what. Yeah, <laughs> I would, I'm not saying the whole McLaughlin Drive right. wouldn't be affected. No, no. Okay, that's. So I mean, that was my big concern. So, so really, I mean, you, you could leave the code as it reads in the book. You could put the water it. one as it reads in the book. Yeah. Just copy it, yeah. and then yeah. underneath it, just put the exemption, so you yeah. don't have to rewrite. Right. You know, we're not rewriting. You know, everything. Basically, here they are. Right. You're in it. You're going to be in it. Right. Exemption. If you pre-exist the line going to you, new subdivision, right. you put two, two, three exemptions underneath it, 
and you don't have yeah, to that's, rewrite the. That's you know, a better way everything. to do it. Yep. Just put some exemptions. Just put two exemptions so underneath it. I would ask the board, uh, after going through this with the dialogue, if the board would give uh, myself and Tom permission to go to our attorneys to uh, review these uh, code well, changes. As long as we do the exemption thing, we have that yeah. before we said. Yeah. But I have one more question. Sorry. No, it's okay. And it's about the one thing I probably don't want to talk about, but this thing so that came up about, about this, <laughs> because the solar thing came up this week, and do we, we're talking about code changes. Do we need to update that code that we just passed? That's one of the things we like to sit down with the lawyer and look, right. talk about. Okay, so that's. We, it's on add that uh, to this Tom list? and my agenda. Okay, because I don't know if the whole board knows that, that there was a so possible it issue. It is yeah, a possible they issue. You guys know? No. You want to know? Yeah. Okay. The, uh, exemption so, required. <laughs> we had this solar law that was a great law, and in the beginning, and we had where you wouldn't be charged for the, uh, you would be exempt from paying for the land being used at the solar, whatever the solar is, if it's a two megawatt or whatever but you could have a pilot program. And then we discussed oh, with I the board that, that we really don't like the pilot program, so we're gonna say that now it changed that you're gonna be taxed on that land. And so when we did that, we kind of messed ourselves up because now we're saying everybody that has solar system on their house, right, has to, be charged. So that's why Cindy Hilbert put out 200 notices saying that you're exempt from this. Remember that whole thing? Yeah, I remember that. So now we have a gentleman that just came back. He came to talk to Tom and myself about a three megawatt. And he said, you really, you can't separate. You can't, it's like, uh, you can't say that you're going to exempt mm. yeah. the people with the houses with the solar, and you're not going to exempt me. He says, so we have to find out a way to actually bring the pilot back in a way that is uniform for them. Right. The, the, like you said, the, the pilot is, is separate from the you code. You can't uh, See what happens is distinguish the, between the house right. and, the, and the solar farm. The simplicity is there's a, there's a line. On one side of the line, it says we tax solar. On the other side of the line, it says we don't tax solar. We weren't going to tax solar. The problem was is that we wanted to go after the farms. That's so okay. now we put in the code book, we're going to tax solar. You can't, you can't pick and choose, almost like spot zoning. Who's going to get taxed and who's not? The residential is going to not get taxed. The commercial is not going to get taxed, but the farms are going to get taxed. Any way you want to put that. It can't be on this side of the line. If you're on this side of the line, you're exempting, you're exempting everybody. So at this point, solar farms are exempt, the way our code book reads, all right? The, the idea of pilots are separate from the code book. It has nothing to do with the code book. Code book's either going to say you're taxing solar or you're not taxing solar. You guys decide as a group, as an entity, as a municipality in this case, whether you're going to sit down and do a pilot program with a solar farm. You, you're going to do one or you're not going to do one. The reality is if you don't do a pilot, again, and, and this is solely your decision, but here's, here's the, the real, reality of it. If you don't do a pilot program, what you're basing your taxes on or their taxes paid on that solar farm are based on the assessor's valuation and what the value of that solar farm is. So in five years, if the assessor says it's worth two million and the solar company says it's worth one million, then you've got a problem. You're gonna end up in arbitration and in court and it's been my understanding of, of, under some research that 99% of the time the solar companies win because they have the data to back it under hundreds of municipalities where the evaluation has decreased to a point where you won't get as much. With the pilot, you know what you're getting, obviously, right? You guys know what a pilot is. You're gonna know what you're getting for the next 15 years. There's no arguments, there's no lawsuits, there's no determination of what's going on. Um, at the point, the new solar company, I was with them an hour and a half, doesn't have a problem paying his fair share. They don't have a problem building things, helping the town out, paying taxes. They have no problem with that. But he came in with the understanding that I don't have to pay anything right now. If I go to the planning board, I'm exempt. I don't have to pay you anything. That's this? not my intention, but this is the fact. You will benefit wholeheartedly under a pilot. We will be glad to sit down and do a pilot similar to the one you just did. We will pay you. We will help you do things you want. Talk to us. 
but be aware, if I apply today and I go to the planning board and that code exists, I owe you nothing in taxes. Well, Tom, th we explicitly changed that to say that they uh, no real property tax exemption under RT RPTL 487 shall be applicable within its jur jurisdiction. So we, they are not exempt. That's why residential people have to fill out a special form to exempt themselves. You, you'd have to, you'd have to. But that's our new code. That's the change to Right, but they're saying that that is, is that's an Ill illegality to be put in the code because again, you Who's can't. That? The, uh, the solid applicant? person. Right, and he's not, again, he's not saying he doesn't want to pay. He's not saying that we're wrong, but he read the section of the code and he, and I, four so what's he want to do? I don't, no, no, this, this He is, doesn't care. Huh? He doesn't care. Right now, he doesn't have to pay anything under his interpretation. That under 407 A. 47 2? Uh, what is, the what is legal our legal Real property tax law or under our code? Not this under our code. Under the RPTL? Under the New York State, correct. Real property tax law? That there's there's no, ex you cannot pick and choose so who gets to pay tax. You're saying when we made this change to eliminate the ability to do pilots, right. we screwed up. Well, again, I, I think, kind of and I could be wrong, but I think <laughs> nice way of it. The, the interpretation of the ability to do pilots or not is, is, is strictly separate from the code book. The pilot is, is, is what you, do, you decide to do. That, what you're, what you're reading me, is to say taxable, non-taxable, right? Not pilots or non-pilots. The yeah, pilot is not mentioned that was, that was the intent of this, though. We well, the intent to... could be there, but right. again, the word pilot is not there. That's a, that's a negotiation between two entities, in your case, a municipality and a solar company or a solar farm, to say we want a pilot if we don't. Mm -hmm. If you decide you don't want a pilot, then you go into negotiations on value of the farm, and where the tax is on that farm. And that's where he says, again, no problem. We don't want pilots. That's what we were trying to do. We Correct. Not... But he said, be aware. Again, and this is strictly, again, I'm not putting any more credit into his argument than our argument. But what I'm telling you is he says he's been through these hundreds of times. And the assessor's values, in comparison to what the value of the farm is that they could prove, always come up miles apart. And there's always arbitration halfway through the through the tax purpose because we could agree that today it's worth three million because that's what they built it for yeah. but five years from now you're going to say it's worth 2.5 and you've decreased it at a half million they're going to say no it's worth 1.2 and you're going to have to prove it's not and they're going to prove yeah it is because here go, we've done it you could go through our normal process and appeal it to our to our uh, you know yeah, through the assessor's office that's what he's saying that's what he's saying but you're going to end up in arbitration and in a lawsuit they're going to they're going to come with their lawyers and say Here's 100 other municipalities that we did the same system in, and, and in those 100, it's worth 1.5, and you're telling me it's worth 2.8. So it, it, it's a matter just like a grievance in the assessor's office. Prove it to me. Bring the properties around us, which we do in our grievance property in town. Bring the other 15 houses in town and prove it to me that your house is not worth this. Right. They're going to do that, and he's telling me, again, the guy is not mm -hmm. pushing us in any way. He's just saying, we will have the proof to show you what our system's going to be so worth. What, what, the main thing I is that's suggest, what we've got to have the lawyer talk. Yeah, that's what I would suggest. Yeah, what you, we'll go to the lawyer, we'll, we'll talk about yeah, it, and right. see what they suggest. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see what our legal counsel says about it. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm sure there's got to be some kind of de 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 depreciation scale for these power plants if he has that much info. There, there is, is but again, he is not yeah, putting anything on our assessor or one word. He just said he has seen a lot of stuff where assessors just go out of control. Yeah. If our assessors one of the ones that say, yeah, absolutely, I agree with you, then it's fine. Then we're going to get a decreased tax every year until that's, that's worth zero. But again, our conversation with Cindy as of the other day, they're exempt. As of today, they're exempt. That's from her. Again, outside my expertise, Cindy says right now the way our code's written and, and, the, and the discussion with that gentleman, actually prior to the discussion with the gentleman, because I was sitting with him and I walked next door by myself, and she told me that solar farm is exempt as of today. See, that's what, cracked, that's what kills me the most. She knew the extent of what we wanted to do with this law. That's our assessor. How did she not tell yeah, us they, this prior they, to things this? Happen. Should have made us aware. Should have made us aware of this before. A lot not of things we should be aware of, but, you know. Well, even after the fact. It's after but, the fact. So this yeah. gentleman came in, he's, he yep. has uh, concerns, so we'll go talk to a lawyer, myself and Tom. Yeah. So I'd like to have a motion from the board that uh, gives uh, uh, Tom and myself uh, permission to go to talk to uh, our lawyers, legal. I make the motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you.
Yeah, I don't think exactly. Al and I are not claiming to be experts in this. We're just going to figure it out. But under what he said, and again, and, and I take him well, for I face mean, value, what, what our assessor said, it looks like we are, we're not where we wanted to be with this. So let's figure it out. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. Tom, you talked a little bit about the EPCO issue, the first thing, and you said that you alluded to some issues with that, and Al said it was a latest fiasco. Can you clarify what that's all about? Um, what I could just say on that is that th there was a difference in opinion on how the wording of the definition of escrow was described in our code book. And I could agree or disagree with that, but I think the new definition clears a lot of things up. Uh, what the individual instances is actually in litigation right now, so I'm not really sure I could talk about it. I mean, it's between a developer and the town? It's between an individual and the town, I could say. On a particular project? Yeah, you could say that. Oh, sorry? Yes, yeah, so you could say that. Okay. Again, it, it, it's a difference in opinion on the definition of escrow. Again, I believe our, we're correct, but what I did is we just sharpened it up a little bit more to include a little bit more than a one-line sentence of what escrow is. I mean, escrow is usually defined fairly easy, and it's usually acceptable the way it was written. It's in most of the, uh, the other town's code books. So just to alleviate any speculation on what the word actually means, we've just enhanced it. That's basically all we did with that definition. Can you say what the objection was in broad terms? At the top of my head, I'm not really sure. It, again, it was just a, it was a difference in opinion of what escrow meant and what they actually owed us. That that was the problem. That they believed that the word escrow meant something other than what I believe 99% of the other people knows what escrow means. But we, we live and learn every day, and if we had to sharpen a, a definition, it was fairly simple by putting an extra line or two in by doing a little bit more investigative work through Webster's and through you know the websites and, and other things in the state code book. State code, code book was pretty much online and what we had in ours, so there was really no difference there. So again, for a little bit of clarity, we added a couple lines just to help it, because again, a definition with a couple extra lines in it could be a, a little bit more defined than right. just the single line we had in there. Like Tom's saying, we're not experts, but we wanted to put down exactly what we wanted to talk to board about. So this way we go to our attorneys and clarify everything that trying to, you know, say what we're trying to say and put it into legal words, you know, for our code book. Okay. Yeah. Because as things are written in 86, 90, 92, as things, you know, as we develop it, you know, a newer age thing, you know, definitions can evolve, even if it's just a word or two. So we're trying to evolve with that. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Right. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so, B, I had Milton sewer plant roof. Every time I go down to uh, the train station, I look at that roof, and it's, it's it, it needs some love and care. So, uh, I like uh, work to work with Tom and uh, see if we could get three quotes on uh, sealing that roof. I guess you will paint it with some aluminum. It's a, a metal roof. The Milton uh, sewer plant. <laughs> Milton sewer plant, yeah. As you're going down, you look at the roof, it's yeah. all rusty and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. it, needs, it seems to me that it needs to be uh, uh, coated or taken care of. Oh, you somewhere. think I know about that? Huh? <laughs> this is the first I'm hearing of it, so I don't know. No, no, I, that I, 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 about that's what I put it on the workshop item here, so this way I could discuss it. Oh, discuss it with me, sure. Yeah, I, discuss it. I mean, I but I would to like to get... I like expertise in it or something. No. We're yeah. going to oh, get okay. you a yeah. roller yeah. and a bucket, and you're going to get it. Just get a quote. I don't know the okay. job I was picking up. No, I just, I wanted to bring it up to the board <laughs> to make sure they knew what I was doing. Oh, yeah. As far as getting three quotes to do that. Okay. So, <laughs> and you always help me with, out, with the roof. You get a couple quotes, I get a quote, Scott gets a quote, so maybe we could do something Usually. like that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you got them all worked up again. Can we go to the... Uh, <laughs> you want to go to Meet Me in Marlboro so they can... Yeah. Not much left up there anyway. So um, we're going to skip the, uh, the computers. That's going to be the long thing. So Meet Me in Marlboro, you guys want to come up and talk to us? Come on up. Come on up. Okay. We, we can put out the agenda. We got the agenda. Okay. Oh yeah. You don't control it. 
Do we have it? It's right. It's right. It's right attached to the lower. Go lower down on where you were. This is town. It's right in, inside our agenda. It's in our agenda. Yeah, keep going down. Main Street. All the properties. Yeah. Sheila, come on up and uh, come on up to the microphone. BJ, left, left. You guys are come, up. Come, you can come up. Yeah. If you want to wait for him, you can wait. You want to see. The trouble is, if we get into something else, it's going to be a long discussion. It could be about. We have to do it. Could be a while. Could be a long discussion if we don't. You know, we. we You want to get the microphone? So is it working? Right, there you go. Okay. We had a grant proposal from uh, Jacobson's office um, with uh, additional signage, and basically put in for additional farm trail signs to tie into the trails that are that is here now. So they'll be placed along like 299 and the corridors beyond us, so that we can direct visitors here. That's one phase of it. We don't know because that's going to take approval with DOT and other people. So then we came to you and I want to thank you for the support of the boulevard signs. That's our second. So basically we're going to do one of the two. The boulevard signs again are to promote the area with the farm trail and um, businesses and history and the season. So we're going to try to do what we can do. We'll so how much money do you have? So we don't have any money at this point. This is the, the preliminary. Is, um, Seven thousand would be what if we get it. Right. You so. are applying for the grant. Mm -hmm. Right. So you don't have it. Yet. No. Okay. It's not. It's not. Is it a member item? It is money that was allocated from basically 2005, 2006. City Ooh. from Ag and Market. So it's kind of oh, money for, that. Oh, so this is not uh, Jonathan or Assemblyman. He's the one who put in for us. He nominated us, Going I guess back, would be the word. Yeah. Scoopus? Uh, no. Uh, no. Jonathan. Jacobson. Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan Jacobson. Jacob. Yeah. So Jonathan's going back to the original 2006 It was money, monies? I guess, that was there and left. So we um, invited him in and we met with him a couple of times and gave him and Senator Scoopus a tour and just explained what we're trying to do. So. He was trying to support us by putting in and giving, among other organizations. So, so you're applying, you have to do a write up, an application or a write up of some kind. We did. And your proposal is to use that money to, to create these boulevard signs using either existing uh, stanchions we or put in for all existing new. poles or right. some new poles. Not poles. Well, you mean poles to hold the sign? Yes, that you're yes. going to mount them on, right? Yes. Some, some you're going to you're going to piggyback on the Lions Club. The Lions Club came to us, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, Steve mm -hmm. did a while ago and okay. said, you know, he wanted to, and I suggest we love the idea of that. We wanted to do it for a long time, but we were waiting for the lamp post to come in. Yeah. <laughs> but then he said, and I think um, I did put a call into Central Hudson to the lady. I haven't heard back yet. I, at this point, I figured let's just wait to see what happens. Um, you know, our I idea is to, like other towns have, Newburgh has, um, you know, theirs up to promote welcome to Newburgh, and I think up in East Sopus they have theirs, and I'm trying to remember if it was the veterans, but each town has their... It's similar to what the high school yeah. has in their parking lot. Yeah, but we want to we wanna really, like, put the train station, put some historical sites on it. You know, maybe put some of the farms that are 200, 300 years old on there. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're looking to do a variety of them. Um, right. We'll see how much money. I don't, we don't know yet. We'll have to see. Uh, Rosemary was nice enough to help us. She put it out in the mail and it got lost. <laughs> She's trying to track it down and get to them, so it's very upsetting. The application right now. you're talking Yeah. Saying? Okay, so, so she, she, she filled out the application. Yeah. Sent it, it in. Lost. It got lost. lost. So you're re yeah. resubmitting it. When will you know? When you well, first and well, she's uh, talking to a gentleman at Ag and Market, so he said it was fine. You know, something happened. She did a priority mail. Um, I really don't have an answer. We're among the other organizations. It sounds like who she's talking to will get the money. Um, but I can't guarantee talking to Jacobson's office and talking to Julie. She's saying we're in the preliminary. So we're hearing two different things. It takes a year. 
So, yeah. but we're gonna want to do both of them. So what? even if we do the farm trail signs, we're gonna try to get back in to do the boulevard signs. So there are two. The trail signs, would that also come under the potential $7,000? Yes, it's gonna okay. be one of the two. Okay. The farm trail signs are very expensive Those because are the green they ones. have to be the certain mm -hmm. poles the break off poles mm -hmm. and they have to be the hardware and the reflective signs. That was my question. Out of the $7,000, what is the individual cost for these signs? Have you got that? She did send it to us. I can't remember what the estimate on the signs were. Um, it was over the seven. We asked, well, we'll to get an idea, I guess we can do the breakdown. We asked for cost of for 10 signs and we were over the 7,000. We were up in eight. So if you did the math, I, you know. So, and that's not including, well, it is including if they installed it. So we're, we were gonna take up the difference and if we're gonna do the 10. Again, we'd have to get the approval. We'd have to go to each individual one. We wanna get them off of like, you know, uh, the throughway and getting off the New Falls exit, directing them down to 99, down to 90 W, down in Newburgh, same thing, by the walkway. We want to get so that it ties in. We wanted to even try to do something where we could add to the signs. Um, initially, what we went, uh, Judy and I went to Senator Larkin, this is how far back, asked him to add to our farm trail signs. We wanted to kind of pull in the art and the wine. Um, so that's what kind of kick-started it way back. And then when we met with the um, representatives, we brought it back up. And so they pulled from there. So. I mean, it sounds like a great idea as far as I'm concerned. And yeah. So we want to thank you because when we shot the email out, I know it was very last minute. They gave us a very short period of time to pull it together and get it out. So we wanted to be sure that we put it out there and, we, you know, we could do this. Okay. Talking to the well, everybody supported the boulevards, boulevard yeah. signs. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I support. appreciate that. Yeah. You know, and if... Uh, my office could do anything as far as calling the assemblyman up or anything. Don't hesitate to well, we, let me know. Right. Once we get this in place, we'll probably need to do that in order to get approvals. It was very tough the first time around, and I know Larkin really helped in getting the signs out there along, t you know, and working with the DOT. Yeah. Um, so I just want to be clear. Was yeah. it a preliminary application? <laughs> That is the problem. One person is saying it's preliminary, and then when Rosemary is talking to the representative from Ag and Markets, she's kind of feeling it's a, a little different, like the money is sitting there. Okay. So I really don't have a clear answer on okay. that one. Yeah. So, um, it was a short window for when we got the notification yeah. to when it had to be submitted, so we just, everyone just kind of scrambled. So anyway. It's hard to know sometimes. Yeah. I don't. So yeah. Sheila, yeah. I, I'm going to go back one yeah. more time yes, for the for the signs that you want to do for the meeting and barrel trail signs. In addition to that, you want to do the extra signs that go it's on. It's going to be one or the two. Well, I mean, if you did both, did you come up with a, a, a figure of what it would cost for it, everything? Yes. Well, we got a, we got an estimate from um, the boulevards company, which was the same company the Lions Club used, plus we went to David Pulliam, because we understand we're going to have to put, and we wanted to, to coordinate it so that the si our signs would go up from spring to when they put up their holiday uh, signs, so this way David wouldn't have to do it twice and, you know, could work everything out. Um, it would depend, it would probably be about the same amount of money, depending on how many we do. So. In the Hamlet, we were looking to do smaller signs, like 24 by 48, and then Steve told me the signs along 9W would be, you know, it sounds crazy, like 30 by 60, they're really big. Yeah, I know, it sounds, and he measured, I, I could have that, yeah, 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 I know it. And so, um, it sounds huge, <laughs> it is, yeah. So, um, so I'm not sure, uh, but we would use that money up. Well, I'm, I'm so asking, 7000 $7, doesn't seem like it's going to do a lot as far mm -hmm. as I'm saying. Is it it's something that we have to ask uh, Mr. Scoopis or Jameson, can we get more monies well, than what you're asking for? Well, what we were going to do is, yeah, this was, yeah, this was prior. So we were hoping to, like, create two phases. So whatever comes first, one or the other, and then come back to them and say we want to do this because this is money that was already put aside. So um, 
Well, the one you just applied for was for the monument, for the boulevard signs, is that right? It was one of the one two. Of the oh, you don't care. One or the other. We worded it okay. that upon approval, meaning in other words, whatever comes first, if we're gonna have a hard time getting signs in, then maybe we'll put up boulevard four okay. farm trail signs and utilize the rest of the money for the boulevard Sounds signs. like you need about fifteen to $20,000 to do this right. We need yeah, because you do everything. Both yeah, you because need twenty thousand dollars minimum. To yeah, do we're what cutting you're the signs about. down yeah. to the amount that we okay. would like. Okay. First, if sort of as a phase one, like you said, and then see how that. Have you ever happen. tried also, like, because what, like, they even just taking the high school into what they did is they put that out to the public and people actually purchased those. Yes, we thought signs. of that. That was the initial thing to have it sponsored. Mm -hmm. So basically, say. The, weeds want to be on the other side weeds would sponsor it i'm just using it as an example right right and we did we were thinking that but when this came about we were like okay and you know to just kind of get the jump on it doesn't mean we can't do that because every time they print the screen print is going to cost money so one side you know if you print so many looking the same you're going to get charged that but if you're going to customize it then you're going to get charged more Let's see what happens with the uh, seven thousand yeah. dollars. What there about the tours and packages now that BJ's back? people involved in it, and uh, quite honestly, it's a time-consuming project, and uh, we just need, really need to get these people to, various people that are involved in all of this, to get them excited about it. Mm -hmm. The excitement is missing a little bit, I think. It might be our presentation is lacking, who knows? But it, it will happen. It's, it's also a question of getting it out in, into the world on the, on the website. Right now, I just placed another couple of calls to the cruise lines that uh, should hopefully come in here. But I, I'm all, at the same time a little hesitant to say, come on in next year, because what do we know? Do we have a new waterfront next year or not? We don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> and uh, so. what is for, uh, one thing for sure, these uh, cruise lines are already looking at 22. 21 is pretty much already set up. And uh, so we have a good chance for, for 2022 to attract these um, uh, ships, boats. Well, these are existing tours that come up the Hudson River that this would be another spot for them to Well, stop. this is the thing. The question is, are we stealing the business from our neighbors up and down the river? Mm -hmm. Can we make this stop so attractive that they would cut out, doubtful they would cut out West Point? No, I don't think so. Well, I mean, if they could, on the other hand, use this landing and include West Point in the motor coaches leaving from here and do a day trip, including us and West Point. But how attractive are we compared to what they're already doing? We don't know. Right. What can we offer them? And that's the thing. We think that we have a lot of things, and we do. We have you know, wineries, distilleries, uh, orchards, etc. down the line. Right. But are we more attractive than Poughkeepsie, Highland, West Point, et cetera? This is, that's why I want to come up here and give them a day around here, courtesy of Meet Me in Marlboro. We'll take them all over the place and feed them and, mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. Just to, so because we see it again and again, even when we bring politicians in here, take them around for the day. It's like their jaw is dropping, you see. We had no idea. Right. And they represent us and they don't know us. Right. So this is really something that on a local level as well as for <coughs> folks coming in from overseas. And these cruise lines actually are becoming a lot more international. They now started to take off from New York instead of from somewhere in Rhode Island or Connecticut and ending up in Montreal. So it's really, it's a, 
makes New York State shine. Question again? Can we get them in here? And uh, what I would like to see from the board is if we could get, I have seen, of course, what we all have seen, the layout <coughs> and so on, but is, is there any artist renderings of, uh, of what we expect to, to have so we they can use up. that as a presentation? They've been up. I mean, there's one at the, uh, by the uh, train station. No, I know, I know. So we have renderings <coughs> up in the office also. Uh, we just uh, replaced the ones that were, with? excuse me? Is there anything else we can come up with to, give you to, the to use for this pre these presentations? We can give you the PowerPoints and the reports and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, they, we could sit down and <coughs> discuss what you need for your presentation from whatever we have as far as uh, yeah. all the stuff that we've, you uh, can have all, all the studies we've done. And, and you don't expect to get anything else than what you already have. I mean, you're not developing anything else for this. There's nothing else. Yes, we are really constantly, and we're constantly trying to get more money to improve the Milton. Well, Lincoln. the money part of it, but I'm, I'm talking again about the presentation itself to get the, uh, something we can use. Uh, well, yeah, like but it's it's hard, like you said. First of all, we just signed the contracts. We're going to have a, uh, a construction meeting with uh, the people that are going to be here. Uh, when is that? Remember, uh, it's this February. Early February. So, yeah, so we'll find out when they're going to actually pull piling and find out all that stuff and start when they're actually going to do construction. The other, the other issue is the, the, uh, the at grade crossing, which we're dealing with DOT yeah. and the state and stuff like that. That's moving forward. But it's like you say, it's time, it's government. So you don't really know. But we, the only thing we do know and we do control is the pier. So uh, we'll find out during that construction meeting exactly when they're going to start and uh, move forward. Yeah. But in terms of conceptual drawings and stuff like that, we have gobs of that kind of stuff. I think yeah. we could give you a lot of that. So if that's what you're asking yes. for in terms of the Milton Landing, the Milton Pier, and that sort of thing. Yeah, so we, we have, have that, that stuff on flash yeah. drives and everything. Right? Combining yeah. that with getting the right representatives yeah. from the yeah. cruise lines in yeah. here. And walk the walk the pier for that matter, you know, that uh, it'll all it'll all work out. Yeah, I, I mean we've I, been talking about this for years. Right? I, oh, well, we have. Well, <laughs> I mean, great. when you first found out that we purchased the property, you came to me and you talked to me about the deep water piers and, and this whole idea about ships, you know, docking there. And that's so that's we're working on that. It's only unfortunately it's been like 10, 15 years, but we're getting there. Yeah, right. BJ, just so you know, too, the state just announced they're possibly going to be open a state park up in Kingston now, competing against us here. Uh, so we don't know if that's actually going to happen. Or not. I mean, it looks like it's going to happen. Yeah. So they're going to throw a lot of money into that project. Um, so take that into mind when you're thinking about tours and stuff. Like you just said, can we compete with that? You know, that's like almost an unlimited budget if it's a state park, right? Um, but we are trying to do our best of what we can do to help. I, I think you just don't care about it. You just keep on going. Yeah. I mean, you keep on going, build it, they will come. I think we got a good plan. I think yes. the town board's being very proactive. Sure. I think, you know, uh, and I think we could put it together with Meet Me and Marlboro and the town board and everybody, a good package that people would want to stop. And I also think we should think jointly about fundraising. There's a lot of money out there. And I mean, if you only talk about 30, 40,000, it all helps, right? All right, well, our part in the fundraising is to go after these grants that will help us build the pier, which we've already committed to that, and then the park around it, which we continue to try to get funding for that. I mean, we have all kinds of plans for beautifying that whole area. Just need some money. And we continually go after grants gotten turned down three times on that, but we're going to go again for the fourth time. So we're constantly going trying to go <coughs> after the money on that, on that particular uh, piece of... Uh, yeah, I'm very optimistic, and uh, if we can just uh, talk them into coming up here. I thought of if they could come in here middle or late March, maybe early April, and the weather's a little better and looks a little greener around here, and really uh, spend a day with, 
with uh, the two companies we're talking about. I'll let you know when, when, they are, yeah, oh, when they're coming. And uh, I'm sure we can buy them lunch. Somewhere. How about Ulster County Tourism? I mean, you know, I know we've talked about this before, but have, are they willing to help us at all? Or? Especially we're the entrance to Ulster County. Yeah. So um, we just actually had a grant meeting uh, to talk about grants and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I just only bring that up because we talked about a shuttle. You know, we're already thinking, how is this going to work out? And I think in BJ's case, if there's a, a period of time to say, well, maybe in three years or, you know, it's going to take that long to put the packages together and actually start to formulate them. I have no doubt to me. Kingston State Park, that's, that's totally one thing. We have the farming. I always say it. We have the river, the valley, the mountains. It, it's taught us to sell it. And that's why I have, we have on the agenda to really push the fact of we're the home of the first New York State Farm Trail. You go to Warwick, they put it out there. And that's where we would like the support of the town to really utilize that with the Farm Trail logo because the more we brand the town, we're going to sell the town, and I think that's well, and also what hasn't been mentioned is Legoland coming in, mm -hmm. Two different things. and totally. that's bringing in thousands of mm -hmm. it's going to bring in thousands of people here. Okay. Something we should capitalize on, get our exposure down there. And of course, we can go on and on with I love New York, but I mean, we can only do so much. We haven't hired a hundred thousand dollar guy to run our show yet. It's you have it? Too, so it takes a little time. <laughs> well, the I Love New York guy, he was very positive about uh, our town, right? Very much so. And oh, yeah, no question. That, that seed still? that was planted at that time, yeah. I think it's going to grow. It's going to, uh, okay. it's just what's the next step. We would love to, to, to be featured on their website. Mm -hmm. Like everybody else want to be on the website. But I think all of these things just uh, take some time. Gentleman in question from the, from uh, I love New York. I believe he is retiring this year, but uh, I happen to know the guy that might take over his job. So we should be. Should, it's also it really is very much up to us to to get involved and not just wait for me, me for I love New York to come to us, but the other way around. Right. And uh, you talked just a little about so when you do the tours, if we get to that point, hopefully, right? We do tours. How does that work with transportation? Like, like they get off the dock, but how do they get from point A to point B, C, D? Right? You're talking about. Show you're, you're talking yeah. about is that is that done by the tour company, or is that done by? There could be two different individual. ways. And what we're trying to do is just to we we try to support local. So right now I'm actually talking to a gentleman. There's two gentlemen that live right here in Marlboro that could supply transportation, and we'd like to work with them, but. Yes, of course. However, it's very much up to the cruise lines, of course. I think that's what you were asking also. Right, so like if they book a what package, is that price of that transportation built into the person's ticket no, per these day? cruise these lines, days. like so many other cruise lines, charge for shore excursions. So they're just charging for the transportation to the dock? And then you would buy a, like an excursion, I would say, I guess? Yeah, I, and that excursion cruise, includes the transportation? The, yes, the, if the cruise passenger wants to go sightseeing, you will have to pay for it. Some cruise lines include it, and things change from year to year. Uh, it would be great if it was all included, because then we get, we get everybody off the boat to go into the, this area, right? But, but we, uh, if, I'm trying to go with what Scott's saying. So if we met with the cruise lines and they came up, we could work with the cruise lines to say, we're going to have, you're going to go apple picking, you're going to go taste some wine, and say you're going to go to a historical location or get some. We could build that package and working with them. I don't know as far as the transportation, again, we could you know, set it up that somebody would have a little shuttle or a bus or a van or something. Well, we're talking about 100 passengers on these ships. Mm -hmm. so well, I'm thinking like, you know, culture. when I go on a cruise and I book an excursion, I get off the ship, I have a ticket, I go, that includes the transportation, they bring me there, they bring me back, it's a three hour tour, whatever it might be, and I come back to the ship. I'm envisioning, is that what your exactly ambition is? Exactly the same. Right? Yeah. 
Okay. About four, about four years ago, I met with Susan Holt up at Ulster County uh, Tourism and Mike Hine, and uh, they said when we get closer to this, any fruition on this, that UCAT would probably be heavily involved. Yeah, they in spoke it, so. about the UCAT. Suzanne just stepped down. Mm -hmm. right. We were actually just talking about that, and and we were talking about the UCAT and their stop. The problem is, is their stop comes to Stewart. So we would have to get the people from. No, it would be, right, when I talk to Suzanne, it would be more of logistically set up and scheduled to where UCAT would take a heavy, yeah. would, would possibly take a heavy involvement in it. But it would be, we're not, at the point that I presented the landing to herself and my kind, um, we weren't at that point yet. It was the idea of it. So, and they said absolutely, they would like to have a vested interest in this, and that's where UCAT would step in. So that's, this. all these bridges we're going to have to cross as we get closer to what the, timeline's going to be and you know especially with the Columbia because we seem to be in fairly good handshake partnership with them at this point so, so when we get this by this year we're going to have a good time frame of what knowing when, when this is going to be completed should yeah mm -hmm. when do we start that conversation I guess what I'm saying with these cruise lines and these people to set these things up I think we would be setting something up for 2022 probably late 21, 22. Right. You know, it's not, it's not just going to be like, hey, it's done, come on in. It's going to be a while. And how does that, and have you guys looked into if a, a cruise ship docks there, how does that work? Is there a docking fee or do they just well, dock there? We, Is there insurance I, involved? I think we as a town would, would do have, we have a to have a person we would have there. a port fee. I'm sure as a town we'd have a port fee. But do fee. we have to have a person there to help them dock? Uh, well, the question up? is, part of the port fee. it is similar to when Norwegian started to fly into Stewart for one year. They paid nothing. Right. That was That's the incentive the for coming there. in. Right. And we will most likely be in the same situation because we will simply be asked by the cruise line, you want us to stop here? Don't charge us. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, I mean, these are No, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. I'm just wondering, like, when, when a boat docks, someone I would have to assume would have to be there. <coughs> To help dock that boat. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I, we, we don't need to do anything. They, they have the guys the jumping crew. off yeah, the boat Tom. and tie it yeah. up and all of that. Yeah, so if someone comes Shoot. into our dock, smashes the half side of the dock, and decides just keep going, I didn't do it. No, that's we serious. don't have nobody there to well, say we did that. The only thing I could think of possibly would be an officer to be down there when the <coughs> ships come in. Stop. Pardon me? Stop. I can't hear you. <laughs> Guys, this, we're getting kind of ahead of ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really are. <coughs> we got the intent. We know we're right yeah. with you. We know what you want to do. You know what I, we yeah. want to do. I think we're right on the same page. Right, and um, I'm pleased to be here once a month because as we develop all of this, we will not keep too many secrets from you. We will tell you what's going on, and uh, we will we will get this all set up just like the pier. Everything takes time. <coughs> We'll get there. We want to thank you, your organization, for all the hard work you do. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We go. Computers, servers, and PCs. Hey, hey Mr. Brooks. Man, he's here. You want to come up? Come on. Guys, I gave you uh, printouts. Printouts of all the estimates are in uh, your uh, hard copies. Put the microphone there so you have it recorded. You want to stand or you want to sit? I, I, first of all, I'd like to thank Scott for putting this all together with the IT committee. Uh, I think uh, Scott doesn't mind that we should address, I feel it's pretty crucial as the servers, the two servers that we need. So if you could address that. Uh, Danny, sure. and the cost, and maybe a setup. Okay. Um, as we all know that the uh, servers now are end of life. They're not being supported by Microsoft. Might want to talk we, with them. We've right. got the, the extended warranties right now. 
so we recover for that. Um, in lieu of that, we got two proposals from, from Dell, say contract bid pricing for the servers. And um, let me pull that up real quick. We got them here, guys. We got it. You got it there? Yeah, we got the package over here. You got the package over there? Mm-hmm. The so their servers are about $8,900 $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80 a piece, as you can see. And the servers are the last page, guys. Yeah. Yep. And it's all itemized. Um, Pretty much, pretty much standard server. Yeah, Dan, just for everybody's reference, can you tell us what ones? On, why do we have those servers? What ones on them? Who uses them? That kind of okay. Thing? Thank you. Oops, sorry. What we've done this past year, as you probably know, is that we've uh, migrated some stuff off the service. For example, we've migrated the uh, um, email. We used to have our own email server in house. Now that's up in Google, mm-hmm. so that's in the cloud. Uh, currently, we're using the server for internal security. You log on to your network, your security is given to you by the server on the network. It's also used to house some internal programs we have. Uh, not all programs are in the cloud. We are looking to push them into the cloud. But we use for the Word, Excel. We have the tax uh, program on it. Uh, we have payroll on it, I believe. That right, there's all the checks for us currently. Um, and we also have a police server, which houses the same basic thing. It's handles the internal security, handles all internal data that's proprietary to the police department. Meanwhile, they do have a cloud account through the sheriff's department that handles everything else. Our internal server also handles our tickets still, correct, Chief? That tracks. And that's the two servers we're talking about? The two servers, yep. One for the police department, one for the town. At the end of life. Yes, yes, end of life. This is level set. End of life, uh, how many years have they served the town? Oh, about seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. That's about the average. So, guys, just a quick note, and Danny can explain. There was two sets of servers we got quoted. There is a, it's a, it's the same PE two, uh, T forty four type dra- um, server, but this one is a, what is it called, Danny? Instead of solid moving state. parts inside, it's a solid state. Solid state. Yeah, solid state hard drives. This is a solid state hard drive. That's the new things that are out there now, which means there's less moving parts within your server or your computer, which means you have less breakdowns and less crashes, and it's supposed to be faster. It's supposed to be is an optimal word, but it's a solid state hard drive, and these are a little more, but they're well worth it because you're probably going to get longer life out of them than you would probably other ones. Um, in addition to the last page, I gave you a single page to the edge. Uh, the, the white with the blue quote. These are needed for the servers, and these are the um, uh, the firewalls. But this is it says one and one. It, we would need two of these 1185. So it's 2400 dollars. These two parts, these two Cisco parts, are the firewall parts that are needed for the servers. All right, which means we need in addition to the seventeen thousand eight twenty two, which is two servers at eighty nine eleven. We need two of these eleven eighty five. Thirty three thirty, right? So, so we're up to twenty three twenty thousand. Like twenty twenty three thirty. So we'd be right around twenty thousand total. You got the twenty five workstations too. Seventeen oh, workstations. I see those from the servers. And the did so we, did we just recently take? Uh, to give you a did we do? Uh, to extend the warranty, did we do it? Yes, yes. yes. We do have the extended warranty outside of the uh, extended life of the wa- of the server by a third party company. Because Dell would not do give us extended right. warranty. And what's and how long does that warranty go? I don't have the exact date in front of me. I think we're like six months into it right now. Okay. Nineteen thousand. Is that right? Twenty three seventy. I get the wrong thing. Now so also remind you on these servers five, too, are uh, the drives are special. There's a rate configuration, so at any given time. If one hard drive goes, it'll still keep on running. Too. There will be no downtime. Then these are covered on a warranty for, I believe, there's a three year extended warranty we got on these, or three year warranty, which we can extend up to five if we wanted to. So any parts that go on it, they will come here on location and replace those parts within 24 hours. Very important, especially for the police department, because they're 24 7. I'm sure that you're suggesting, along with Scott and the IT people, to go with the solid state. Yes, by all means. So this is twenty thousand one hundred and ninety-two dollars and twenty-four cents. If you guys see on the second page I gave you, 
it is the breakdown of our budget, which obviously the reason we're real, we're bringing this up to the board as a whole, because if it was in budget, we could say, yeah, it's already budgeted for it. Obviously, this is out of our budget. Our budget is twenty uh, $25,000. Where is that? Where I mean, I'm sorry. This year it is, last year it was $25,000. Yeah, this year it's $20,000. It's a 10 and a 10. Yep, yeah. on the bottom. Bottom. What you see, what we spent in 2019 is above. So I had Chris look at what we'd spent in 2019. We had originally had 10000 We always budget 10000 for Alpha Tech. Uh, as of last year, Danny almost used all of it. Almost. 9810. Uh, and the computers as of last year was 15,000. We ended up using 11,518. So we were a little under budget, and that's why we cut back a little this year that's originally. Right. Is it 10,000 on so the computers? It's 10,000 for computers right now. So obviously, this purchase of just the servers alone were $10,000 over budget. Can I make a suggestion too from here from this point on? Maybe, as you know, our budget goes like this every five yep, years. Yep. So we should really plan on that every five to seven years to have that big bump because these servers only last another five to seven years, not because yep. they can't physically last longer than that, but because technology will not sit yeah. on the servers well, anymore. In theory, we could set up a reserve fund like we did for the highway equipment and the police department cars because this is, this is an item that has a, has a, has a shelf life. So it's easy to do. We can we can do a depreciation scale. Yeah, we'd, on have that. To, we'd have to ask because there's certain yeah, things by the state that you're allowed to do reserve yeah. funds for. I think we might certain have even asked. Chris like heavy about equipment, that. machinery and stuff, you're allowed to do certain. Things. It's it's regulated by state code out. But we could definitely ask. Well, we could we couldn't create a line item within our budget. I think we would be able to do for our technology, technology expense. You, you wouldn't have to call it out. That's kind of what it is, but you're not. You're not technically supposed to like set us. It's kind of odd. You're not supposed to set a savings account on. You're supposed, you're supposed to, to budget out. for what you're going to spend in that year. That's how the state wants you to do things. Right. They do. They do allow certain reserve funds for these high-end heavy equipment cars, things like. So, like when we asked Chris about that, those funds, she had to look up into her book and call the state and verify this was something. Okay. So we could definitely ask that. That's a very good suggestion. I'm not sure if it could work, but. So we're about how much over of our. So right there, we're ten thousand over. We didn't even get to the PCs yet. So you're talking twenty-five thousand, looks like. So uh, I mean, you're talking about the the actual physical so right server, now, but you're not talking about the installation yeah. and the cost. Yeah. Well, that's in his More. part of his ten thousand. Oh. That's yeah. yeah. So right now, what was we're talking about the, the first two items. Basically, we're talking about they outlived their useful life and we're at the risk of not being able to do business as a town. Well, yeah, we're open up. We're opening ourselves up for some for a major bad crashes. For a bad day. And, and, and Danny, we're just talking about hardware here, mm -hmm. right? You're yes. going to upgrade the operating then, system, right? Oh yeah, that the Windows uh, Server yeah. 2019. Is that included in these? Courses? Yes, and plus a new firewall will give us a better, newer protection also. Okay. So some compliance, plus that's probably required by the state. For the county, because we have a special police department, we have a secure connection. And these the firewalls, Danny, have these were the ones with the option with we could we can expand later on. Was that the ones where you're saying we were going to have expand? Oh no, home? that's uh, we're talking about the new uh, no bail reform act, where we're going to have a plethora of information that's going to come down from the county and ourselves internally. As the chief knows, like we have videos in the cars now, and that's taking up a lot more space. It's just going to take more as time oh. goes on. And that's another discussion we had for another piece of hardware that can handle all this extra data that's going to come in. Yeah, you know? we, I mean, we had a cons discussion, guys, in our IT meeting about all this extra stuff that's going to be required, yeah. especially by the, the PBA and the court system. So that's they're both on two separate yeah. servers. And just, just to add on to that bail reform, based what we what I know about what Chief discussed with everybody else about, about discovery, is that we can't have a crash because we've got basically nope. 14 days to produce or somebody walks free. So, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to have to be convinced too hard to, <laughs> to make a motion. I mean, we're at a position where we're going to have to do something, obviously, and we recognized it before the train came off the tracks. And I think we're, we're all, I think all now. of us on the IT team, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think we're all in agreement that the servers are a must must. Yeah. It comes down to the, the next item, and that's the PCs throughout the town, where we 
we're, we're having an a, a, a internal discussion and with Danny, because all our, most of the, almost like the first sheet will show you, out of our 20, we have 22, uh, seven, 29 actual computers we have within our building. 22 of them are Windows 7, and only seven of them are Windows 10 right now. Uh, if you haven't known, or you, I'm sure you guys all know, Windows 7 is not supported anymore. Yep. Um, there's risk to Windows 7s to having people get into your system through Windows 7 because it's not supported. There's a lot of issues with it, and Danny, Wait, I'm sure, could explain a lot. I want to ask Danny a question. Uh, you said with the servers, right, that there's security. Does that, does that uh, eliminate the problem with PCs through that firewall? That protects the PCs, but the, the operating system of the PC itself it's is protected. insecure, it's not yeah. protected. Okay. All right. And there's many ways that um, but they stuff can come to. in through bypass the fire. For example, I'll give you somebody can have their personal email in the town, uh, their Gmail, besides our corporate Gmail, and they, uh, somebody can sneak in that way. Somebody can come in with a USB stick, have a virus on it, and infect our computers, and they'll attack Windows 7 first because there's no there's no fix for it. There's no, no uh, Microsoft is not, is not support Protection. anymore. Do do if something security. new comes through, like a wannabe ransomware from, uh, from North Korea, you know, you're, 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 all, you're all done. Because remember that, attack PCs that did not have the latest Windows security updates for Windows 7. So if another wannabe ransomware comes out and you got Windows 7 here, there's a good possibility your favorite computer will be hit and it will backdoor the server. Yeah. That's the problem, and that's the problem with ransomware. We, and you pick up the paper, you can do a, a Google search, and that's yeah, the biggest headache with everybody right now. So, yes. so the, the implementation of what we did as far as protecting for ransom uh, with that software that you, you suggested it. and then I implemented, yeah. I mean, does that protect them? Well, you can, keep, you can protect yourself as much as you possibly can. But remember, what's out there, they're one step ahead of you. The bad guy is one step ahead of you. So is he a, uh, one step ahead of me if I have Windows 10? You're better. Not if you update. Well, so I was just asking the well, question. Well, you're, you're, you're letting your front door of your house open, put it that way, and make it a lot easier for them, you know? And, yeah, we've taken the precautions this year, as you know, with the, 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 the cloud backup and uh, Carbonite that we have right now and the multiple backup solutions we have. And I always tell everybody the same thing as a consultant. I said, look, it's a not, matter, not a matter of, of if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when it's going to happen. So you've got to be prepared for it, basically. Well, so, I mean, that's, that's a lot of PCs besides the 20-some thousand yeah. dollars for the two servers. The, the state of the PCs, other than being the Windows 7, I understand that. They're all basically functioning. We can try not yep. to lose them. My only suggestion would be based on um, the seven not being supported at all is the cr wait, let's start moving to the critical areas of town, which Colleen, proud, Colleen and Danielle would be probably the most critical. At they, this they, point. Got the, they're uh, they've got the. They've got. I see, yeah. I see yeah. they're covered, but I see yeah. our entire police. I don't know if we. Seven. But there's other. I'm not going to say on record, but I'm going to say there's other probably vital parts of our town government that should be updated to Windows 10 immediately. Um, What's the cost if we did everything? I would say they would need eight of those immediately. Fifteen thousand was on registration. Well, well, look, if we what did is the cost of going ev totally to Windows Ten everywhere versus selectively. Do we know Fifteen thousand four hundred would be. Yeah, but we don't yeah. need twenty-five. PCs. We don't need twenty-five. No, we're down to seventeen. Or we're down like to that. seventeen, uh, which is ten. Th the actual, just mm -hmm. so if you guys want to write it down. Yes. Seventeen PCs, and these are i5 PCs. Um, they're the i5. I these are i5 ones. These are six sixteen. -y. Danny got the new quote. Um, oh, 17 sorry. PCs is $10,481.86, 104186 That's what it would cost. That's okay. what it would those cost to do all 17 To PCs. Windows 10, and then run on those processors. Right. And run on those processors, okay. which is a total of, if you went with everything that we're saying here, the firewalls, the two servers, 17 PCs is 30000 Six hundred and seventy-four dollars and ten cents, so which is let's just say twenty thousand six hundred and seventy 
four dollars over budget. Budget. So, which means we'd we would have done, that would be we it. would be done. So we would have to. I talked to Chris today. She said we would have to do it at the next board meeting through a resolution to transfer money okay. from a general fund to this IT fund account which we're gonna have, we have to do next meeting, by the way, we have to do some transfers out of that fund already because of the reserve funds that Alan was just bringing up. We yep. brought, we did pass the reserve funds, but we never transferred money. So those will be on the agenda next meeting too. Um, so that's what we're at. We're at, if, if we wanna do everything like Howard said, like we said, yep. we just wanna say, let's clean house, do everything, get it done. We're at $30,674.10. Danny's cost is about $100 per PC, did you say, Danny? I forget what you said. Usually standard is about an hour per C, eight hours per server. And the servers are a little more, obviously. Yes, but, they are. Um, but Danny's number is built in that original 10,000 of his Alphatech, Alphatech money. Right. So we have $10,000 in budget. We would need about, let's just say 20, 21,000, 20,640 out of our- Where's the court? Yeah, the court wipes us out for the, whatever it's- Where are the courts? You know, we've got quite a bit of- The courts, I don't- 2020. The court is their own system. Yeah, they're, they have- Court doesn't, we don't, we don't do the PCs, they get them all through the count. Okay, so Scott, two, two, go out point. So we have 10,000 10, in Alpha Tech's budget this year. We would kind of front end load that this year to, to do all this work. So that ten thousand dollars for Danny, how, did, how is that usually spent? Danny's money spent as used. He doesn't get yeah. paid it unless he uses it. Right. So he, you're so going to use it. He's going to use. He's going to use that out of the ten thousand line item. Right. Eight hours. You got to remember, most of Danny's money spent last year was because PCs were crashing, yeah. servers were yeah. crashing. Yeah. Well, that's what and I'm trying. So that's what I'm kind of getting. We're kind of yeah. like going to spend it now. And once you do servers, you have PCs, and the maintenance go down yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Well, so but, I part. mean, it wasn't just because of that. There was some a lot of software issues. Yeah, there. yeah. Printer issues. I mean, there's always stuff that's going to I'm just going to know, right. I know yeah. 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 what's going on. I mean, sometimes they yeah. yeah. also. Yeah. Let, let me interject one more thing, too. Yeah, it's kind so of important. Know. Last year, he spent almost uh, Scott, I think what we also said that any computer, that's why I said mark what the processor is, because if it's an i5 or greater, we can do an upgrade from Microsoft free, but then again, do you want to upgrade a PC that's that old? I and think still most have of them are I3s. Yeah. yeah we, I did price. go back around and look, and I think Jerry looked. And yeah, I3s. Most of them are just, I think there's one or two that are I5s. And I know one down at the mm -hmm. highway is a laptop is an I5. Right. It's not a PC. Um, but, but there are a few that are I5s. So like you see on here, Windows 10, uh, Colleen and Daniel, we, we already purchased. Right. But... Uh, Cindy's was a, a laptop, which she doesn't need a PC, but hers was already done. Kathy's, I mean, uh, the planning board was Windows 10, and Kathy at the highways was Windows 10 already. Right. Her PC was updated. And Bruno's, which I don't understand why Bruno's is a Windows 10. Thing, but it is. I think he probably did an upgrade on it. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, we, so we're going to And there's no, there's no grants out there, right? Next, week's or, or okay. next meeting's agenda. To, I'm in agreement to do So are you guys in agreement you want to go full in? Well, the other question is, or do you not want to go full in? I don't want to go full in. Just, just. Uh, well, I'll tell you right now. Well, where that's we my, the money my from, only obviously. opinion. I know, the, I know those servers are very important, General. but I'm ready to stage the uh, PCs, like Al said. Well, one well, thing we didn't got, talk about. We've I just got eight that, that we've got some probably ones that probably shouldn't be on seven. Is what I'm saying. Like the police department. I wouldn't want to say that. I'm going to tell you guys something I'm though, to keep that Alan. Quiet. I could tell you one thing. So what we didn't bring up, so I'm asking, basically what I'm saying is, in, as one of the IT reps, I'm asking for an additional 20674 Jerry possibly will be getting a grant, which we already budgeted for. Was it seven? We budgeted for $23,000 to replace the last machine in the 2020 budget. I applied for a grant, but we're waiting for an answer, and we expect to come soon. So, so there's a great possibility that if we spend that $20,000 now, thirty thousand. I'm going to get refunded. We well, we already got ten budget. We're spending additional. You get ten thousand exactly. 
So we only might have to go over about eight thousand dollars realistically from budget because if we take twenty out of general fund, he gets twelve thousand back. That goes back into the general fund, right? So in in reality, you're spending only maybe eight grand. Now I'm not saying a hundred percent he's getting that, but it looks good. Yeah. The thing is about do we know for certain which one of these is less likely to be hacked in some way? I mean, it could happen on any one of these. It's hard. Right? It's hard. To so say. that's the danger we face if we don't go full bore. I understand. But but he just mentioned that you could open your email and you get on Gmail and you could create the virus leaving Windows yeah, 10. that's always the case, but I it, mean, it, any, but any, there's no protection. But with Windows 7 not, not supported, it's certainly wide, much wider, wider open. Wider open triples if you don't get out of Windows 7. Because when you're in, you're in 7 now, it's unsupported. So I have a laptop at home. I still have some 7, and I, I have to use it for certain things that I do with work. But it's not supported, so it means it's highly, it's, it's, Pretty good percent, pretty good possibility that that could get hacked because they're not updating the security really in it anymore. Mm -hmm. There are or no 10, security updates. When you shut the computer down, it's updating your security. So these new threats, they're trying to stay a step ahead of threat. Seven, seven's the wild west. Right. There's not even a constable in town. And if we had a seven that was just by itself, not connected to the network, not connected to the internet, controlling some machinery like some place like that. In the factories and industries out there, not a problem. Yeah, right. I got XP machines. As a matter of fact, I think we got old machines at the police department that we have had old programs on it that doesn't see the internet. They're fine. But once you plug into the internet, that's where your problem is. And unfortunately, I think 90% of all devices here are connected to the internet. Yeah. Yeah. I think, just as my opinion, that if we're running this, this town as a business, then we got to run this town as a business. So we can't. We can't. I mean, I, I read about towns that get hijacked, hospitals that get hijacked, or ransomware. I'm sorry, yep. I used the word ransom, and it effectively shuts down government. <laughs> you know, we can't be shut down. So this is it's not something I want to do. This is something we kind of feel we have to do. Plus, if we only selectively do not all of the 17, but a portion of it, it's that's still going to cost us five or six thousand, right? Yeah, yeah. and, yeah, and we now we're still susceptible, so we're not solving our problem. Right. So so I'm. I don't need to discuss this one. I think what I guess we're saying, I, from an IT side, I think what we're asking from a, 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 is that if I could speak for you, Hannah, no, you can speak. Is you're that we would just ask the supervisor to put it on the agenda and then let the board vote on it, right? I'm fine yeah, with that. I'm fine with that. And can I say one more thing too? I did the research on it, and New York State IT themselves have uh, it, it's, it's written in their IT rules and regs. You that systems account. can no longer be supported or patched to current version must be removed. So that's yeah, the yeah, state yeah, level. Yeah. Not that we have to follow that, but it would be a good thing to kind of look at them as, hey, they're, 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 they're the big guys in the government business. Yeah, they do yeah, you know, do. when the state tells you something, I don't want to run scared because the state tells yeah, you something. Yeah, there are a lot of mandates <laughs> we don't even need. That's the first thing I don't want to do. Yeah, but uh, so I put it on the agenda and do it uh, and uh, get all the numbers from Scott and uh, uh, Danny and uh, do a resolution and then uh, we could vote on it. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very thanks much. For coming. Thanks, Dan. 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 Yep. thanks for coming, Dan. Yep. So uh, the last thing is the camp busing donation. So just I so just could tell you I got a... a email from uh, Bill Pomeroy saying that Quality Bus wasn't going to uh, uphold their uh, donation of the buses that the camp uses. And so uh, I was thinking about doing an RFP, but then I talked to Mike, again, that the owner, the ex-owner of Quality Bus, and he said, give me a couple of days, so I'll give you an update, so <laughs> we don't have to discuss that right now. Okay. I'll let you know for sure if they're going to or if they're not going to, and then we have to do an RFP. We didn't put it in our budget. It's somewhere is around $6,000. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I just got an email from Bill uh, saying that the county has increased their, uh, for each camp uh, person, from $2 to $4 to go to the uh, 
uh, swimming, the uh, Ulster County swimming. So they increased it, they doubled it. And they <laughs> added one third, I guess it was $6 to $9 for the, uh, the camp counselors. That I think we could live with. But it, the bus thing was a big one. So, bus is big. Yeah. Uh, so I called Mike up today, I talked. He said, let me, give me a couple of days, I'll get back to you. I think in the beginning, I don't, I don't really think quality actually is the one that actually did the donation. I think Mike got the donation <coughs> money from someplace else. I think the new company, yeah. And well, so Mike owned it, it, he was the owner, so yeah, he just it, said. It depends, there might have, I, been, a, there might have been a discretionary fund. Right, it could be any place, but yeah. we really, uh, we yeah, would like to see that donation put back. <laughs> it would be great if we could see it. So Let's with that. Explains. Uh, can I ask about the baseball thing now? Absolutely. All right. So I, I remember I brought up last meeting about uh, batting cages inside Tomback and the garage area. I did was able to secure a batting cage. We and Al had a meeting with Meet Me in uh, Marble. Meet Me in Marble. Me and Marble. <laughs> the right. baseball, Baltimore. Marble Youth Baseball. They're very interested in it. Um, Marble Youth Baseball does not have monies available to spend, but they do have a net, which we could possibly use their net, but I also secured a net from an individual person that had a batting cage themselves. So he said we could definitely have it. He had a very nice batting cage. So we could use that. It's 40 feet long by 10 feet wide. The Tomback garages are 47 feet by about 27 feet. So it's actually a good size. The only thing I'm asking the board, and I don't know if you guys are willing, is I do have to get like the green grass carpet stuff to go on the ground so the balls don't go flying. And when they hit that cement, they just seem to like. Just probably should, maybe even, I don't know, project wise, you might want to look at that gym floor. And something. So I want to put something temporary because eventually, we're, you know, we're going to so change it. I mean, that room could still be used for that. That's the point is like, if you get something yeah. that rolls back, the net just comes back and forth, but you would have to roll out that carpet every time, right? So they could use it for Zumba and all that stuff. But if you had that carpet that could roll in and roll out. You mean after we update it? How wide is it, Scott? Even after we update Scott, it, it how can wide still is it? be used. So how wide, it, 40 how wide is it? Uh, Tom, the, I mean, the garages are 27 foot no, wide. No, how wide is the batting the, cage? The what? The how batting wide is the batting, batting cage? cage? 10 feet. Yeah. You could probably go to, honestly, you could probably go up to Lowe's or Home Depot. Well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. We have a Lowe's card. I didn't know if the board was willing to what, say. Why don't you get a price and just yeah, email And we could look at it. Email yeah. us the price. Because then you could just put it on a little roller. And who, who would use you this? You roll it. Yeah. Marble Youth Baseball. So Mar this is, yeah, Marble Youth Baseball. Maybe, some, like, I know the Marble Baseball team, the schools right that's now, right. because basketball season's in, they can't get in the gyms and stuff. But it would be more than likely non for profits but we could also i mean you can make money off this you could actually rent these spaces out for hours at a time and make money now i don't want to compete because there is a local person right, that's, right. that's going to be it. opening one of these facilities yeah we don't want and i don't want to go that's against right. them so i'm looking at more of this is like the non for profits yeah, like yeah. that can maybe afford that all the time right. it's a service it's a service something different that we could could you give to the uh, community. It's just, with the Scott, ball in here? It's just gonna yeah. be yeah. from practice. It's probably yeah. Yeah. Scott, it's just gonna be more the Marble Youth Baseball or are we gonna have like other organizations? It could be any like like I know when we had that meeting, like there's a lot of these guys that do the travel teams for Cooperstown and things that they're not. Right, but uh, but you know what's it'd be just it has to be Marble people. Marble people. people. No, 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 uh, no bird when they come in. You know that uh, I mean, discretion. Uh, that's where we'd have to start charging them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think if it's I think outside if it's, organization. I think if it's outside organization, yeah. I think if it's anything other than Marlboro Youth Sports, well, if it's travel teams. To the youth baseball. Youth baseball. Baseball. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's on our, we it's have, on our what ability. What I'm saying is we have travel teams schedule. located yeah. in the town of Marlboro. We can rent right, it but, to. But now, so they have the way they have it, it. Yeah, because the way they have it now with these travel teams, it's not just Marlboro kids on the teams. No, no, no. I agree with you, Ed. I agree with you. So Just yeah, to check people. into what it costs. The Let end. me see what the, the grass area costs. I mean, I looked into foot. like a, what's that? It's 50 cents a square foot. There you go. She knows. That's the grass carpet. About 200 bucks. About 40, 400, right? Yeah. Well, I was thinking about 500 bucks, so that's how it's. So, uh, 
Can you talk to Highway? They, they have to move this. I told them to Highway. They have, they said they'll take whatever we need out of there. They have, they, they have it there because we had it. I said, well, I just asked John. I said, well, you know, you got to get used to not having it there, right? right. That's why we did, so, uh, spent all that money. He, did put, he put a lot of stuff up there. Tell him we'll put the batting cage up at the dump. <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason I have it down there now is yeah. mainly because there's heat on. Yeah. So they do have it plugged in. So Charlie's uh, water, that water thing yeah, he has, the pump. is going to have to put, you know, have to put antifreeze in it or something to keep it so it doesn't you freeze. Should be able to set that up in no time. Right? But they said it's no problem to move what they have. But yeah, setting this up doesn't yeah. take a while. Yeah. But all right, let me get the price on the grass. Right. But that was the only thing. And what I did just said question. I did look into. Well, can I make a motion then to spend up to five hundred dollars? Well, no, I'm make the motion. Oh, you go ahead, make the motion. So I make a motion that uh, we spend up to five hundred dollars for the artificial grass turf. Artificial turf. I'll second that. Uh, not to exceed five hundred dollars. I'll second. All right. Yes. Yes. All in favor. All in favor. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. So moved. Got that, Mark? <laughs> okay. Uh, Alan. Alan. Yeah, I just want to bring up a uh, motion for adjournment. <laughs> <laughs> you have public comments. All in favor. Not. So moved. Thank you, gentlemen.